All right, we are officially live and recording. And uh, yeah, Dad, I would love it if you could share with the group at large kind of what you're seeing going on in the real estate market and specifically as it pertains to the Memphis metro area. Everyone here, or the majority of people here, do own investment properties there. Okay, sure thing. Well, good morning, everyone, and thanks, uh, thanks so much for for coming. I know with uh, all the turbulence going on and uh, all the all the disruption, uh, you know, the real estate investments I know are are really important. And uh, you know, fortunately, compared to being in the stock market, uh, you're finding that it's uh, a relatively stable place. <laughs> Compared to what we uh, what we see in the markets, it, it, it's it's very crazy. It's very unprecedented. Um, but uh, you know, for our part, we know how important these uh, these investments are to people, and we're we're doing our level best to to manage the situation uh, as best we can. So, as Brian said, what I wanted to do is just kind of give you a big picture view of uh, you know what I see, you know, going on uh, in general in the you know the the real estate market. And, uh, uh, what I see happening in Memphis in particular. Uh, I'll be followed by Kent and and uh, Kent Quakerball again, as Brian said. He, he you know he you know he he runs our major business units. Uh, he'll give you kind of an update on uh, exactly what's going on within the property management company and uh, what we're doing on the construction side and so forth, and get into some of the uh, specifics about what we're up to. Okay, so first let, let let's uh, let's just take a look at what uh, you know what's going on at 50,000 feet in the uh, in the real estate business. Uh, you see a lot of headlines out there, and and uh, you know some say you know real estate's doing okay. Most of the headlines are very uh, very bearish sounding when it comes to uh, real estate. You know they're they're saying you know real estate's getting clobbered and so on. Uh, what uh, <clears throat> What I'm finding is the important distinction to make above all else is the difference between commercial real estate and residential real estate. So in commercial real estate, we're you know generally talking about things like uh, you know office and retail, <laughs> and it's no surprise. I mean, everybody kind of understands that uh, restaurants have really gotten beaten up. Uh, you know, apparel stores have uh, gotten hit very uh, very hard. <clears throat> Uh, you know, hotels, you know, so all, all of these large commercial uh, enterprises have really gotten hammered. So this is where we see a lot of news about uh, rent deferrals and, and, and so on being uh, especially important. This is, uh, generally speaking, not a really good time to be a commercial uh, landlord. Uh, it, it, it's not totally clear to me uh, how they're going to, you know, dig out of, <laughs> dig out of that mess. It really has to do with how quickly the nation gets uh, gets back to work. But residential is very different. It's a, you know it's a very very different story. And and kind of the the, the fundamental fundamental premise of residential real estate is you know people have to have a place to live. And you know because of that, you know when when we have a crisis like this and shelter in place orders. You know, our, our needs suddenly become very simple. You know, we're we're gonna, you know, as as people, we're gonna be very focused on making sure that uh, that we've got food on the table first and foremost, and that we have shelter. And uh, you know, for that reason, uh, residential real estate, you know, hasn't been impacted uh, nearly as much as uh, commercial real estate. Now that said, you know, yesterday I was reading a headline that said. Uh, 25% of the tenants in the nation did not make their rent payments in April. You know, so it's a very scary sounding headline. But then you drill down a little deeper and you find that, uh, well, this was as of uh, a survey conducted between April 3rd and April 5th about whether or not they paid April's rent or not. It is absolutely normal that, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll certainly speak for Memphis, but I know this to be true nationally, that usually about 75 to 80 percent of the tenants have paid their rent by the fifth of the month so it would be normal that 25 percent of tenants did not pay their uh, rent payments in april now it turns out in our case in, in memphis you know now you know yesterday was the 15th and as as of the 15th 96.3 uh, percent of our tenants had paid uh paid their rent i, I mean Again, we look at the rent roll that we had at the beginning of the month, 
and we look at the dollars of rent paid as of the 15th, it's 96.3%. So that is actually a little above average. Uh, normally by the 15th of the month, we're at 90, about 94%, and we're, now we're at 96. So, so again, you have to be very careful when you read the, read the headlines and, and apply some context to what, uh, what they're saying, because it, 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 it sometimes sounds a little scarier than it, uh, than it really is. Most of the people that got affected residentially were, you know, less affluent people because there are a preponderance of jobs among the less affluent that don't require as much education. So, uh, you know, if you're in the service business, uh, you know, or hospitality business, you know, a server in a restaurant, it, it doesn't require a lot of uh, uh, education and training in many cases for those jobs, you know, to be able to, you know, to clean or, you know, change bedding like like uh, maids do at hotels. Uh, those are the people who really, really got hit, uh, hit pretty hard. Uh, also, we find that areas that had high urban density, uh, you know, where you have a lot of people living per square mile, and again, New York is a good example of that, uh, you know, New Orleans, Chicago, uh, Detroit, you, you know, where you have this high urban density, you know, that, that enabled the virus to spread more, and, uh, you know, so those, you know, those companies in those areas just really got, uh, got hammered. So you look at a place like Memphis, we, we're looking at, a, at an area that's, that's very low density. I mean, Memphis is, uh, even its urban area is not, not extremely dense compared to most urban areas. And there is a large suburban population. And with respect to our single family homes, that's, that's where they are, are in those suburban locations. And, uh, uh, you know, very, very large lots, you know, very, you know, homes are very, very spread out. So we, we didn't see as much disease transmission in Memphis, you know, like Memphis compared to Nashville, Nashville is a more dense city. And, uh, you know, the in, uh, uh, infection rates and transmission rates were greater in Nashville than, than we've been seeing in Memphis. Also, we note that in Memphis, it's uh, got much lower exposure to hospitality and service. You know, it is not uh, as big a tourist destination as, say, New, New Orleans or Las Vegas or San Francisco or places, you know, places like that. Uh, instead, you see a lot of uh, people working uh, just in disproportionately high numbers in the logistics business because, you know, Memphis uh, is the nation's logistics center. The, it, it has the you know, the largest number of, uh, you know, logistics employees in the nation and logistics is humming right now. I mean, FedEx is busy, they, you know, we've had to turn to e-commerce to, you know, to uh, acquire goods and services instead of going to brick and mortar stores because we're not allowed to go there and a lot of them are, are closed. So uh, as a result, uh, e-commerce is very busy. And of course, FedEx is headquartered in Memphis, uh, Companies have a lot of their logistics centers located there, and those are extremely busy. Uh, that most of the logistics businesses are considered essential businesses, and they've been allowed to operate. Um, another thing we observe in, in Memphis, uh, and, and this is really peculiar to Meridian, uh, and, you know, Meridian Pacific Properties and our 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 investment properties. They are Class A properties. Uh, that means they are, you know, they're a little more high end, a little more expensive, uh, and you have to be more affluent to be able to afford to uh, to rent them. So, uh, what we find is that more affluent tenants are just simply better educated. Uh, they tend to be better savers. They have, uh, you know, they are less likely to be living to paycheck, you know, living uh, paycheck to paycheck. Many of them still do, but fewer of them do, a lower percentage do. Uh, so that actually uh, has played well for most of, uh, uh, most of our investors. Another thing that we've really been focused on is uh, very strong tenant outreach. Uh, we noticed uh, 
I know we've been observing what other companies have been doing, not only in Memphis, but around the nation. You know, I, I talk regularly to my peers in other cities, and I'm just observing at how they're managing things. And, and we decided uh, as a business that th this is a time that communication is really important. And, and so we are communicating more with tenants now than, than perhaps we ever have. Uh, we are making sure that they are, that they are aware of resources that, uh, that'll help them. You know, so we're sending them links to show them how to apply for unemployment and, uh, you know, how to check up on their stimulus payments and, and uh, try to, you know, basically, pro you know, give them a certain level of uh, financial counseling in some cases, you know, to, in an effort to try and help them out. Uh, you know, not only is that just a nice thing to do, but of course, our not so hidden agenda is we want to help them make sure they've got the capital available to pay their rent. The government stimulus package under the CARE Act, which was passed uh, a couple weeks ago, is helping. Uh, people are now starting to receive their stimulus payments, and, it, and it's definitely uh, helping. You know, those, those $1,200 payments for, for uh, you know, most wage earners, you know, definitely applies to nearly all of them, not <clears throat> nearly all of our tenants. Um, so I, I, I'd, I'd say that Memphis generally is holding up relatively well. This, uh, the impact of, of the coronavirus is, is very, very regional. And uh, uh, Memphis, for, you know, the reasons I mentioned, is really holding up pretty well. Uh, the measures taken there to protect people are very similar to what we, uh, you know, what we see, you know, in California and actually most of the nation. So, you know, we're seeing shelter in place. We're seeing essential businesses being allowed to continue to operate. Uh, in, as a property management company and as a construction company, both of those were declared uh, to be essential businesses in, in Memphis. So we've been allowed to continue to operate, although, as you can see, we're doing it very differently. You know, we're, we're uh, many of our, you know, white collar employees are, are working from home. But, uh, you know, we, we communicate very well. We're, you know, we've for years used, you know, go to meeting and Zoom meeting and so on to communicate with each other. So, so uh, our ability to adapt was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty swift. So anyhow, that, that, that's kind of the big picture on the uh, uh, State of the Union on uh, real estate in Memphis in general. And what I'd like to do now is just invite Kent, who you know, manages all of our you know, on-the-ground operations in, in Memphis, to give you some specifics about what's going on within Meridian Property Management and within our uh, construction arm. So Kent, I'll turn it over to you at this point. Great. Thanks, Kevin. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with everybody today. Thank you for joining us to get uh, an update on, on everything with uh, Meridian. And I think Kevin gave a very good uh, general um, overview of Memphis and the market as he's done in his constant communications over the last three weeks. And you'll, con you'll continue to see uh, those communications going out on a regular basis. Um, but just to summarize, you know, contrary to the sensational headlines, and uh, I think we're all getting our fill of sensational headlines now about Americans not paying rent and rent strikes and things like that. The reality on the ground is, is much different. And uh, we sit down on a number of industry roundtables, probably two or three a week, as everyone, is, everyone else is communicating very much as well and, and uh, collaborating and sharing notes. And we're noticing that um, across the board, it's a very regional, as Kevin said, um, but even in Memphis, um, you know, People in other uh, property management companies, they're seeing relatively strong results, not quite as strong as ours. You know, we're at 96% rents collected uh, for April, which is three percentage points above actually where we've been the last two months. So try to explain that. Not quite sure why we're ahead of schedule other than people uh, want to make sure their housing is taken care of and they're allocating funds a little bit earlier to take care of their basic needs, uh, as he mentioned. Um, you know, and there's a lot of reasons for that that Kevin went through, Class A properties, higher screening processes for our tenants, um, and, and the general Memphis economy, which is, which is booming rather than declining, other than the hospitality entertainment communication. 
so April, you know, that was our first big test and it's behind us. And we came through with glowing colors, uh, a large testament to communication, planning, and the execution of our, of our property management team. But what about May and possibly June going forward? Well, what we're hearing from the roundtables and from our competitors around the industry is, you know, people are a little bit more worried about May. Um, jobs were not lost until uh, the last two or three weeks in mass. Uh, so April was kind of taken care of. People did get their or are getting their stimulus checks this week. Uh, so there is some concern around the industry about May and June, and it's, it's justified concern. And we may see a little uptick in rent deferrals, uh, not rent abatements, but rent deferrals. But as of this morning, uh, and we keep our finger on this pulse every day, as of this morning, we've had exactly one out of 620 uh, tenants say that they are possibly going to have a problem in May. So if there's going to be a problem for us, uh, it has not manifested itself as yet. It doesn't mean it won't. Uh, it just means it hasn't happened yet. But this is kind of where we were last month at this time, where we really hadn't seen much activity yet. So bottom line for May, um, we don't see a major uh, increase in rent deferrals even um, for the month of May. And of course, that comes with a caveat. Flip over to the leasing activity. Uh, our leasing uh, team reports the leasing activity is as strong as it has been, and in fact has picked up significantly as it usually does this time of year. So we are, we are now very active, and in fact we're getting more, um, more applications from potentially low quality uh, tenants that seem to be wanting to get out of apartments in the inner city, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but as of right now, we have not seen any decline in property values or any downward pressure in rents. Um, what the one caveat to that is when leases come due, it may be a little challenging to raise rents as we normally would. That's going to be a case by case basis, but it seems uh, in this environment that we probably won't be able to be raising rents um, as we normally would. But again, that's going to be a case by case basis uh, and we'll see. But with all the things you hear about working against us in this COVID environment, uh, it's worth noting that there's an industry consensus that three trends are actually working for us. And as Kevin said, you know, we look at the investment community, we look at the real estate investment community and single family um, residences are clearly the most stable and highest return real estate investments uh, out there right now. And that, that is the consensus across the board. But three trends that are actually working in our favor. One is people are moving towards and preferring single family homes over apartments. Um, so many more people are working at home. So many more people uh, have, uh, have uh, new people as part of their household. I personally have three college students and one professional uh, child working out of my house now. So I'm relegated to the living room. Um, it's just the way life's going to be for a little while. And we are not the only, we are not unique in that way. So single family homes are becoming more attractive than apartments for space reasons and for health safety reasons. Uh, two, the density of being out in the, the less or, or the lower density of being out in the suburbs versus being in more dense urban livings. As Kevin said, Memphis is not that dense, but Still, being out in the suburbs is feels a little bit safer than being in the, uh, the central city area. And then the third phenomenon, as we have shifted more of our focus towards new construction, that's also playing in our favor. There's just a psychological preference for a clean new uh, home rather than taking on someone else's home that may have had, you know, whether valid or not, may have had... Uh, uh, some germs laying around or, or whatever left over from the prior tenants. So those three things, and this is not us coming up with these, these are the kind of the industry uh, trends that we're seeing. And, and we are seeing this validated in some of our conversations with potential tenants. So we think this is just one other positive sign um, supporting our move to new construction in the suburbs uh, in the Memphis market. Moving on to maintenance, you know, the ongoing operations of a property management firm is making sure that our tenants are taken care of, uh, that they're safe and comfortable, and that your properties 
are being maintained um, adequately to protect your values, uh, the values of your properties. And our operations and maintenance have not abated uh, one bit. Um, we are out in all the units, right? This time of year, we start getting a lot of calls for HVAC units as the weather starts to warm up. Uh, that's continuing to happen uh, as it is. We put policies in place uh, for the protection of our staff and our tenants. So all of our uh, technicians uh, arrive on a property with a full battery of uh, personal protection equipment and tenants know that they're coming, tenants distance themselves inside the homes. Uh, and if they are not comfortable having us come to their home, if it's not urgent, we will put it off uh, for, another, for another two weeks. But that hasn't been a predominant uh, occurrence. Um, and in fact, all of our property managers are still coming into the office. Uh, they're distancing themselves and their workspaces a little bit more. Uh, they're wearing masks uh, when we have meetings, but they're all on the job uh, doing everything we can to protect uh, your investments and to service our tenants uh, who, who may have special needs at this point. And then finally, just wanted to touch on uh, the market in general. Another uh, provocative headline that came out this morning was 23% drop in new housing starts in the month of March. So, and I say provocative because the last three months, December through February, were the three highest months in 10 years. And when you actually look at this March versus last March, uh, we're actually, the, the overall industry is actually higher uh, than, it, than it was last year in March. And in particularly in Memphis, uh, we're in touch with uh, virtually all the other builders through our various um, shared subcontractors and there's only one builder who's making high-end homes uh, that may be impacted, but everybody else making, you know, mid-market, low-market, um, uh, R four and five bedroom homes, everyone is going um, going full bore with construction. So that has not that has not stopped. And one of the underlying factors in all this is that we came into this whole uh, COVID-19 uh, instance very different than 2018 where we had a huge oversupply of housing. We're coming into this crisis with a huge undersupply of housing. And in Memphis, that's nationally. And in Memphis specifically, the job growth continues to outpace the addition of new dwellings. And so we know that even in one county, down in Marshall County, where we're starting to take on some new projects in Northern Mississippi, uh, they've got about a 5,000 unit housing uh, shortage based on all the uh, distribution centers and logistics centers that are being developed in northern Mississippi at this point. So bottom line, we're very bullish on the continued strength of the housing market in Memphis. You know, there's going to be winners and losers in this crisis in terms of communities and, and, and industries. And right now, it's looking very strong that single-family housing will be one of the winners and that Memphis as a market will continue to be one of the strongest markets. So we're very bullish on it. And the good news is, as we have increased our production, our construction, excuse me, by a factor of two this year over last year, we've added uh, an additional uh, construction crew, foreman, and we've added four additional uh, community banks. And they are all very bullish on this market as well as we are. So there's a lot of outside validation for what we're doing, what we're doing. And we're, we're very bullish on, while we may have some you know, short-term challenges, we're very bullish on where we're going as single family uh, rental property in Memphis. All right, great. Thanks. That was it. Yeah, that's, that's terrific. Uh, one thing I would add too, is you mentioned there's kind of three things that we have going for us and as far as being in Memphis. A fourth thing that I would add is that with the lower cost of living that's, that's true out there, the stimulus money and the money that is received does go a little bit further than it would in a California residence or something on a more coastal market. So, um, that being said, I do want to turn this over to the group to be able to ask any questions they may have. I want to start with uh, Ted. Um, if you would, would you please unmute yourself and uh, share your question with the group? Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, we have a few tenants with leases that are, that are going to be expiring, say, within the next month or two. And my question was, do you anticipate tenants, um, rather than moving out, um, deciding to continue leases month to month or, or at longer terms? Have you guys heard anything from the property management uh, 
people that are in contact with residents about that? Well, I, I can I can jump in with you know what what I'm observing uh, on on leasing. You know, leasing right now has been strong. Our typical renewal rate before the crisis, uh, you know, had been about 75 percent. Uh, I don't think we have enough data to know yet precisely whether that rate is going to go up or down. But uh, just as I as I'm observing people, you know, unless they have a compelling reason to leave their nest, they're going to want to stay in the nest they're in. <laughs> um, you know, right now you aren't going to see the usual job-related moves that uh, you know would cause people to leave. Uh, I think people's nests are very important to them right now, and uh, I, I think, you know, with all of the uncertainty going on economically, uh, I don't think people are uh, compelled to make changes as readily as they might, uh, you know, under normal circumstances. But how precisely that translates to, you know, your properties. You know, I, I don't think we can say because, you know, case by case, people have, you know, different situations that arise and and sometimes they they need to move. But I would be surprised if our renewal rate changed dramatically uh, from the 75 percent it's uh, been the last uh, year or so. Yeah, Kevin, if I could add to that, uh, you know, we are seeing uh, just talking to the the property managers this morning, we're seeing people actually inquiring about extending their leases early just to protect their, their don't want to be in a position where they don't have a place to live. Okay, does that answer your question, Tim? It does, thank you, appreciate it. Great, absolutely. Um, who else in the audience would uh, have a question that they would like to have answered? Uh, we have Miss Burncrantz, Jeannie. The floor is yours. Thanks. Hi, guys. Um, first of all, I just want to really acknowledge you for the quality and compassion in all the communications I've seen that you've shared with us and your clients. It makes Mark and I really proud to be investors with you. So thank you. Um, and I appreciate this opportunity for the update. What I'm curious about is one of our properties, we did get notice, so someone is going to be leaving. And I'm curious about renting during this time. What do you see as um, the rental market? Yeah, Kent, why don't, why don't you take that one? Yeah, I'll do. <clears throat> yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah, as mentioned earlier, we're actually seeing very strong leasing activity. Um, you know, the, the low interest rates are making home buying a little more accessible, even though the mortgage market is uh, a little volatile right now. But I think we, we are we have lost uh, half a dozen um, clients in the last 60 days who are buying homes. And that's a testament to the quality of our tenants. But in general, you know, we try to find that sweet spot of tenants where their their credit scores aren't exceedingly large but they're in that really strong zone where they're gonna be renters for a, for a while. Um, but right now we have not seen any drop off in interest in rental homes. Great, thank you. All right, uh, Nate, you have a question regarding home inspections. <clears throat> yeah, just a quick note. I know uh, we've had our properties there for three, four years now, and we've always had like a, you know, six month, nine month, you know, pop in there, do the home inspection, make sure all the smoke detectors are good, get pictures of the property and all of that. Do you guys anticipate, um, I have one coming up, it's on my calendar to, to ping you guys about it sometime this month. And so I'm just wondering if that is something that is going to be continued or if that's something that just should be pushed back for another month or two. I'm just, just curious how that process will still work if it will continue during this time. Yeah, one of, one of the things we're trying to do right now is limit the amount of uh, non-essential contact because we don't want to expose our our maintenance people to, you know, to, uh, you know, health issues unnecessarily, nor do we want tenants being exposed to any any issues 
that our, our people may be carrying. So we're, we're giving more emphasis now to dealing with essential maintenance, you know, like if, you know, if there's a water heater that's not working or uh, a leaking pipe or something, you know, we're giving priority to those uh, calls. I think very soon we're going to see a, uh, you know, the nation starting to go back to work. I believe it's going to be in the end very regional. Uh, uh, and because Memphis, it, you know, does not suffer from, you know, inherent uh, high density, you know, transmission issues, I think, uh, you, know, you know, as we start seeing those restrictions uh, relieved very soon, uh, we'll be able to do things like, uh, you, you know, uh, you know, continue inspections the way we'd normally do. Uh, but right now, some of those we're, we're deferring. Uh, if somebody, uh, you know, each time we have our maintenance people go in on a, on a routine call, we ask them to do, to at least do a cursory inspection for anything obvious, you know, when, you know, so if they're, to, if they're there to fix a, a plumbing leak or something like that, we, you know, we have them, you know, just take a quick walk around to see if there's anything else going on with the house that they need to report to the property management team, you know, in case the tenant's not taking care of the place or if there's a, you know, a leak in the ceiling or something like that. So, uh, we're, you know, we're going to continue to do that, but, but the actual formal inspections, uh, you know, we'll, we're probably going to wait a couple of weeks until we get the okay to, uh, you know, start relaxing some of the, some of the restrictions. And yeah, if you have a specific concern about a property though, um, you know, let us know because that may move it into the category of being essential and we, and we need to get on, get on it sooner. Fair enough, makes sense. Thank you. And uh, Mike Esslinger, the floor is yours. Thanks, hey, uh, uh, my name is Mike. I'm newer to your uh, investment community. Thanks for inviting me to the call today. Um, I've had a property now for about a month and uh, it hasn't leased yet in the last 30 days. So it's a little bit more of a real time question. Uh, it sounds like the leasing market is going well. Um, so are you tracking that statistically and just, and you don't have to answer, some of this isn't probably an answer for the call, but making sure you are looking at that analytically. So if leasing does not happen uh, for any, obviously many investors here on the phone, um, how you'll track that, how you have to make adjustments to rents if necessary, et cetera. So Kent, I don't know if that's in your side of the world, but um, like some feedback on that, because you said it was still significant or you know increasing. Um, hasn't felt that for me in a single single home and newly single home, it's only been about 30 days. So I don't have a lot of experience with you all. So I just wanted to ask the question. Thanks. You're muted, Kent, just you know. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Yeah, we actually talked about your property and a few others yesterday, and we've got a number of uh, prospects uh, and applications that have qualified that we're working through now. But you know, there was there was about a four week shock to the system, right? Where where activity did slow down, and what we're seeing is, and by the way, Memphis had just about the rainiest uh, winter that they've had in 20 years, and so there was just this tendency for people to cocoon. Uh, in their homes. And so that just started to let up about two weeks ago. And so when I refer to the leasing activity, we've really seen the jump uh, in leasing activity just over the last two weeks. So we, we expect to get um, virtually all of our properties uh, <laughs> leased up here very quickly. Uh, you know, obviously there's no guarantees for that, but there was just, I mean, as you can imagine, people just hunkered down for about 30 days as most of us did and just kind of took a pause. Um, but that said, people who had to get places, they were still uh, very active. But in the last two weeks, it's really picked up. Yeah, we, we have a very specific protocol when, whenever we lease a property, whether it's one we just newly built or one, one we release. Uh, we always do what's called, uh, internally we call it an RA, which is a rental analysis, you know, where, where we're looking at uh, the property, its location, uh, square footage, bedrooms, baths, and so forth. And we look at the comps. Uh, you know, all, all together, uh, we you know we manage collectively uh, over 800 doors. 
so we have a lot of internal information uh, about comps but we also you know look at uh, current uh, rental listings that are uh, typically within a half mile of where the property is located to see what the uh, what the asking rents are <clears throat> so that's how we arrive at the rent that we uh, you know suggest listing it for is you know based on that uh, RA <clears throat> but if uh, after a period of time uh, you know like after, I believe initially after two weeks if we don't see the showing activity or application activity that we expect to see uh, you know immediately we you know we make a change you know and that uh, you know for, first we you know ask ourselves well is there something wrong over at the house you know did somebody track mud in when during a showing or you know you know we, we make sure that you know the sign wasn't stolen or something like that but if, if those things are clear uh, often it's an issue with the rent and it, and we, we will lower the rent uh, very assertively because you know lack of occupancy is typically a lot more expensive than lowering the rent a little bit but but we have an entire protocol around uh, you know how we manage that process uh, and every week you know once a property has gone 21 days without uh, uh, without being tenanted it has to be reported in a weekly meeting that we have uh, every Monday afternoon and so it becomes visible to me to Kent uh, to my partner Jeff you know in the presence of the, our operations manager hope who runs that runs that group and uh, rest assured when, when we you know we, we track how many days that property's gone vacant and uh, uh, you know hope's least favorite thing is to explain to me why you know why a property is taking so long to get get leased but there's usually you know uh, you know something at issue uh, she knows what it is she makes the adjustments and I, I would expect it it should resolve uh, for you here pretty soon Great, thanks for the explanation, folks. Sure. Um, does anyone else uh, have a question that they'd like to ask the group? It looks like Eddie just saw your message. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so plenty of publicity out there for uh, states and municipalities, um, you know, putting bans on evictions and foreclosures. Um, is, is there anything available for Schedule E landlords in the event that we have to make mortgage payments without the rent payments coming in. Yeah, yeah. Ba basically, uh, if you if you have a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac Freddie Mac originated loan, in in your case, I think you got uh, some Fannie Mae loans, as I recall. Um, the, I think, uh, uh, as I recall, those are eligible for up to a you know, 90 day rent forbearance. And uh, what, so what you'd wanna do is contact your loan servicer and, you know, ask them about that specifically. And uh, uh, you can get a, a forbearance, which is a deferral of paying rent. It, it does not, uh, it's not a rent reduction. It's not a rent abatement. You know, you, you, know, you, you still, you, you know, you're still going to owe but the, your servicer can tell you, uh, you know, how the forbearance works, and uh, uh, they you can defer your payments, and th they have pretty reasonable payback uh, arrangements that they make with you. But you'd have to check specifically with your servicer to see what they can do for you. D does that answer your okay, question? Thanks. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. Does anyone else on the call have a question for us? Don't see anyone in either the text box or on screen. Um, I just want to check in with our Meridian team. Is there anything else that you guys want to speak to or share um, about what's going on before I kind of do an outro, talk about our next follow-up steps and when our next meeting will be? Well, you know, for our part, we certainly uh, uh, appreciate you guys as investors, you know, sticking with us. This is a, uh, you know, a difficult, uh, difficult period. Uh, you know, for our part, we're we're very conscious of, of how how important the rental income is from these properties. 
so we're we're certainly doing our level best to try and <clears throat> try and stay on top of it. Um, you know, we've been initiating some some uh, you know different communication protocols. You know, we're we're using a variety of uh, things like videos, newsletters, uh, and uh, webinars like this one in order to you know stay in communication with you about what's uh, what's going on. But uh, anyhow, we, we certainly appreciate uh, your your support, and we will make sure that we continue to communicate with you and uh, uh, you know keep you up to speed on material new developments. If you don't hear from us, it is only because it, you know we believe it, that there's nothing material to report that's worth you know soaking up uh, soaking up your time. But we are going to stay in regular communication until it. Uh, appears to be safe to go back into the water yeah thanks dad and uh we are expecting our next webinar will probably be right after the first initial rent collection in the month of may um which should be right about three weeks time from now um so with that being said that concludes our webinar for today I really want to thank you all again for being here we will continue the outreach and communication as things are uh, worth reporting you can always reach out to any one of us um, via email or phone if you have questions. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you all today. And thanks for uh, spending the time.